my dear students welcome back to our channel students in this video i am explaining mba third semester subject investment and portfolio management second unit important short and long questions and answers let's start quick revision first important short question is briefly discuss capital market theory capital market theory cmt primarily focuses on how securities are priced in an efficient market it suggests that investors make decisions based on the trade off between risk and return with the goal of maximizing portfolio returns for a given level of risk the theory is based on the assumption of efficient markets where all available information is reflected in asset prices the capital asset pricing model cap is a key component of cmt illustrating the relationship between risk beta and expected return ultimately cmt emphasizes diversification and the importance of holding a mix of assets to optimize portfolio performance first important long question is Harry Markowitz portfolio theory Harry Markowitz portfolio theory also known as modern portfolio theory MPT revolutionized the way investors approach risk and return in portfolio management Markowitz introduced the concept in the early 1950s fundamentally altering the field of investment analysis The core idea is that investors can optimize the risk return trade off by diversifying their portfolios rather than relying on individual assets according to Markowitz an investor should focus on the overall portfolio's risk and return not just the performance of individual assets by combining assets that are not perfectly correlated investors can reduce the overall risk of the portfolio the key insight of the theory is that diversification can lower portfolio risk without sacrificing returns because the assets in the portfolio will not move in the same direction at the same time this reduces the impact of any one assets poor performance The theory uses to main statistical measures to evaluate a portfolio expected return and portfolio risk variance or standard deviation the expected return of the portfolio is the weighted average of the expected returns of the individual assets while portfolio risk considers both the individual asset risks and how the assets move in relation to each other known as their correlation or covariance one of the most important concepts in markowitz's theory is the efficient frontier which represents the set of portfolios that offer the highest return for a given level of risk or the lowest risk for a given level of return investors should choose a portfolio along the efficient frontier that matches their risk tolerance Markowitz's theory also led to the development of the mean variance optimization technique which helps determine the optimal portfolio allocation. However, while the theory has been widely influential, it has been critiqued for its reliance on assumptions such as normally distributed returns and constant correlations which may not always reflect real market conditions. In conclusion, Markowitz's portfolio theory emphasizes the importance of diversification and statistical analysis in minimizing risk and enhancing portfolio performance. It laid the groundwork for many subsequent advancements in investment theory and continues to be a cornerstone of modern financial practices. Next important long question is Construction of minimum risk portfolio. 
The construction of a minimum risk portfolio is a key application of modern portfolio theory, MPT, aiming to achieve the lowest possible risk, variance or standard deviation for a given set of assets. This portfolio is constructed by selecting a mix of assets whose combined volatility is minimized. The process typically involves several steps. 1. Select Assets The first step is choosing a set of assets for the portfolio. These can include stocks, bonds, real estate, or other types of investments. 2. Estimate Expected Returns For each asset in the portfolio, estimate the expected return, often based on historical data or analysts' forecasts. 3. Calculate Risk Standard deviation determine the risk of each individual asset. This is usually measured by the standard deviation of past returns, reflecting the asset's volatility. 4. Measure covariance correlation. Calculate the covariance or correlation between the returns of pairs of assets. This step is crucial. Because the correlation between assets impacts portfolio risk. If two assets have a low or negative correlation, they will likely behave differently in various market conditions, which helps to reduce overall portfolio risk. 5. Portfolio Variance Calculation Calculate the overall portfolio risk. Variance which depends not only on the individual assets' risks but also on how they correlate with each other. The formula for portfolio variance is a weighted sum of the variances of individual assets and their covariances. 6. Optimize asset weights using mathematical optimization techniques such as mean variance optimization determine the optimal weights for each asset in the portfolio. The objective is to minimize the portfolio's total variance or standard deviation, resulting in the minimum risk. Portfolio 7. Construct the minimum risk portfolio. Once the asset weights are determined, the portfolio is constructed with these weights to achieve the lowest possible risk. In practice, the minimum risk portfolio is typically located at the lowest point of the efficient frontier, offering the least risk for the given assets. However, it's essential to note that this portfolio might not necessarily provide the highest return it focuses solely on minimizing risk. In conclusion, the minimum risk portfolio construction process involves selecting assets with low correlations, optimizing their weights to minimize overall portfolio volatility and achieving an efficient balance between risk and return. Next important long question is the single index model. The single index model, SIM, is a simplified approach in finance that helps explain the relationship between the returns of an individual asset and the Overall market. It assumes that the return on a particular asset can be explained by the return of a broad market index along with a unique component specific to that asset. The model is a linear regression framework that breaks down the assets return into two parts, the market-related risk and the asset-specific risk. The model is represented as Pre is equal to alpha i plus beta i asterisk rm plus epsilon i, where pre is the return of asset i. Alpha i is the asset's alpha, representing the portion of the return not explained by the market, also known as the asset's abnormal return. Beta i is the asset's sensitivity to market movements, also known as the asset's beta. RM is the return of the market index. Epsilon I is the error term representing the asset's return that is not explained by the market specific risk. 
Key Components Beta, Beta This is a measure of the asset's sensitivity to the markets. Movements A beta of 1 implies the asset moves in line with the market. While a beta greater than 1 means the asset is more volatile than the market. Conversely, a beta of less than 1 indicates lower volatility than the market. Alpha, Alpha represents the asset's return that cannot be explained by its correlation with the market. A positive Alpha indicates the asset outperformed the market on a risk-adjusted basis, while a negative Alpha suggests underperformance. Residual risk, Epsilon the part of the asset's return that cannot be explained by market movements. This is often referred to as unsystematic risk as it is specific to the asset itself. Applications The single index model is commonly used to simplify the estimation of expected returns and portfolio diversification. By focusing on systematic risk, the portion related to market movements and unsystematic risk specific to the asset, the Model helps in constructing diversified portfolios that minimize exposure to unsystematic risk. Conclusion The single index model offers a streamlined way to understand asset returns and their relationship with the broader market. By focusing on market risk, beta, and asset-specific risk, alpha and residuals, it provides a useful tool for portfolio. Management, Risk Assessment, and Performance Evaluation. However, its simplicity can overlook more complex interactions between assets and market factors. Next important long question is Capital Market Line. The Capital Market Line, CML, represents a crucial concept in modern portfolio theory, MPT, illustrating the risk-return trade-off for efficient portfolios, consisting of both risky assets and a risk-free asset. The CML is a straight line that connects the risk-free asset to the market portfolio, which consists of the optimal mix of all risky assets in the market. It depicts the best possible return an investor can expect for any given level of portfolio risk Standard deviation Assuming the investor is investing in a combination of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio. Key features of the CML 1. Risk-free asset The CML starts at the point of the risk-free asset on the vertical axis where the standard deviation or risk is zero. A risk-free Asset is one that provides a guaranteed return with no risk, such as Treasury bills. 2. Market portfolio The line ends at the point where the market portfolio resides, typically represented as a broad market index, like the S&P 500. The market portfolio is the optimal portfolio of risky assets that offers the highest return for a given level of risk. 3. Slope of the CML. The slope of the CML is the sharp ratio, which measures the risk-adjusted return of the portfolio. It is calculated as 4. Efficient frontier. The CML is tangent to the efficient frontier, which represents the set of portfolios that maximize returns for a given level of risk. Only portfolios on the CML are considered efficient as they offer the best return for any level of risk. Significance The capital market line is important because it provides a visual representation of the best possible combinations of risk and return available to investors. Investors can choose a point on the CML depending on their risk tolerance. Higher risk levels correspond to higher expected returns. Conclusion The capital market line is a key concept in portfolio theory, showing the optimal 
risk return combinations achievable by combining a risk free asset with a market portfolio it helps investors make informed decisions on how to balance risk and return aiming for the highest return per unit of risk next important long question is separation theorem the separation theorem also known as the tufend separation theorem is a foundational concept in modern portfolio theory mpt introduced by james tobin in the 1950s the theorem asserts that any investor can achieve an optimal portfolio by combining just two types of portfolios a risk free asset such as treasury bills and a market portfolio the optimal mix of risky assets key concepts of the separation theorem one two asset portfolio the theorem suggests that all investors regardless of their risk preferences can construct an efficient portfolio by mixing a risk free asset and a market portfolio the market portfolio is the portfolio of all risky assets weighted by their market values the risk free asset has zero risk standard deviation and provides a constant return while the market portfolio reflects the highest possible return for a given level of risk two investor preferences the optimal portfolio for an investor is determined by their individual risk tolerance risk covers investors will hold a higher proportion of the risk free asset and a lower proportion of the market portfolio while risk seeking investors will hold more of the market portfolio and less of the risk free asset 3 risk return trade off the separation theorem shows that the decision making process for constructing an optimal portfolio can be separated into two distinct steps so oh, the first step is choosing the market portfolio which is the same for all investors so oh, the second step is deciding how to combine the market portfolio with the risk free asset depending on the investor's risk tolerance for efficient frontier the separation theorem also implies that the capital market line cml is the efficient frontier for all investors as it represents the best possible combinations of risk and return depending on their risk preferences significance the separation theorem simplifies portfolio construction it shows that investors do not need to make individual decisions about specific risky assets instead they can simply adjust the proportions of the risk free asset and the market portfolio making portfolio management easier and more efficient conclusion the separation theorem is a cornerstone of modern portfolio theory demonstrating that an investor's portfolio decisions can be simplified to the selection of a market portfolio and risk free asset combination based on individual risk tolerance it helps streamline investment decisions and enhances the understanding of risk return optimization students for other units explanation and other subjects quick revision or explanation links are available in description check out ones i think it will be useful to you thank you thank you for watching like and share this video with your friends